Anybody up for a vacuum maintenance number three episode? So on the left, I have a Centria 2 that sits in my upstairs closet. Therefore, it does the whole second floor. And in the downstairs coat closet, I have the Centria 1 there on the right. So I'm going to do a whole house carpet cleaning with the Centria 2 handing the bulk majority of the carpet on the second floor and the Centria 1 handling all the carpet on the first floor, which is a little bit less. Before I do the whole house carpet cleaning, these two machines have different fill tubes. Therefore, the bags, even if you use the same exact bag or a compatible bag, actually install a little differently on the fill tubes. Let's examine that a little closer. So this has a non-straight down zipper. It's got this little sideways zipper here. It's kind of cool, but I know it confused a lot of people, so Kirby kind of went away from that a while back. So if we take a look at this fill tube, I'm going to twist to a certain angle and then pull off. We're going to see that it has a tab here and a tab on the other side. It's matching. If you look on the cardboard part of this bag, this collar, it's got a notch and a notch. You want to line these two notches up with these two tabs. So I have to twist the bag, and I realize this can fit um, the newer Kirby's because it's got this nifty little tab here. So I put this cardboard collar on at an angle so it looks it looks like this, it's tilted. And then I just twist so it aligns properly. And that's it, right? Then I can go and stuff the bag in, the inner bag into the outer bag. And carefully zip this back up because it is not the straight zipper. And that takes care of the Centria 1. Now how about we take a look at this Centria 2? Okay, back to a straight zipper on the Centria 2. Take the bag out, and you'll see the way it installs on the bag topper here is different. So it's got this little mechanism right here that gets bent and should click on these two top tabs right there. And then this just kind of levers its way out, angles its way out. So it has a notch, the bottom cardboard part of this here, and then it has this kind of, you know, hook right down here. And you see this is a very, very different fill tube, and it even has the letter F stamped in it. So this takes F type, that is with this on the collar, this type of bag only. Otherwise, if you put another bag on there and you just kind of, you know, put it on like this, right? Then when the Kirby comes on, this just pulls off. So, needs to be the matching type of bag collar. So, I take this bottom part, wedge it in and down, make sure that it grabs. There. It has to grab down here. If, it, if you don't get that, it's going to fly off. And then the top part, you bend the cardboard tabs. They click onto the plastic top of the tabs here. Right. Click. Now, that's not going to come off. It is secured on the top, and it is also secured on the bottom. And that is solid. So now we've made sure that our bags are installed and installed properly to where they won't just fly off. Now I've done the whole house carpet cleaning, so let's take a look at the upstairs vacuum. And you should do this pretty much every time you vacuum. All right, see that? See, we got some hair, and this, this is all my wife's hair. So you can see the hair pickup on this wooden brush roll isn't that bad. It will be fairly easy to get off. So you just, you know, work on it and just keep pulling it off. Now, you can, if it's really terrible, undo 
the locking tabs here and then pull this whole thing out if you want to get better access to it or change the belt. That really is up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and remove all this hair off camera with, uh, we'll call it vacuum number one on the second floor. And like magic, this brush roll is now clean. Bristles are in pretty good shape too. Okay, that's ready to go. Now let's take a look at the first floor vacuum. See if there's any differences. And we still definitely have some of my wife's hair. I was going to say it's not as much. Eh, it's close. So, all right. Let me go clean this up. Be right back. And like magic, we now have a clean Centria 1 brush roll. So at this point in the usage of, I guess, a typical Kirby bag machine or many other bag machines would substitute for this, you would make sure that you'd have a bag in, you'd do your vacuuming, and then you do just a little basic maintenance to make sure that the brush rolls are basically clean of, you know, various debris or, I don't know, t-shirts, shoelaces, whatever happens to get wound around in there. And then, frankly, you just put it back in the closet and that's it. You're just, you're just done. But as my longtime viewers know, I take periodically, maybe once every couple of months, an extra step. My upstairs Kirby, I use this bag currently. I have a, I have a bunch more, these charcoal bags. And I dated this bag January 6th of 19. So this bag is getting close to two years old. And I think this is one of my last green HEPA Kirby bags. You can see it's somewhat well used. And it has a date on it, January 3rd of 19. And this is uh, goes to my Centria 1 that's down on the first floor. So I had some people ask me, how do you get the dirt out of here and I say use use your thumbs. So I'm just using my thumbs, pushing this out. And you can see pretty easily, see all that dog hair? A lot of dog hair. That will mostly but not completely come off. That's my scent beads that I put in there. You can have designer smells for your Kirby bags. And this, um, I don't think I've blown this out in, oh gee, I, I mean, it's been well over a month. It's it probably been two months at least. And there's no real smell or anything like that.
Here's both bags together. Don't fall off. So, it's pretty decent. There's some dog hair still on there. That will actually somewhat come off if you rub the two together. But at least any smell that will have built up, and of course any large dirt is no longer there. And you can use this again. Now, I just take my thumbs again, push the bag back the other way. And we're in good shape. That's it here. Sit here. Okay, that's one. All right. And I got the other one. Over here. Right. Over here. All right. Ready to go again. Now that you've seen the significantly dirty extra step it's optional obviously but it enables me to be a cheapskate no, not really the reason why i do it is because i found out that after i started using kirby's in my house that the carpet is so clean it would take me more than a year in fact more than a year and a half to fill a Kirby bag up. Any large bag machine wouldn't, wouldn't really matter what it was. Uh, Kirby, Royal, Sanitaire, you name it. And frankly, after about uh, no more than about two months, the bags would smell. So that's why I go and actually blow them out because, you know, our Rosie's uh, hair gets in there and it just starts stinking. It's like, oh, this, this is unpleasant. So you put scent beads in and you do what you can. But what really takes care of getting rid of the smell is uh, blowing all that stuff out. Yes, it's somewhat unhygienic and it's messy, but uh, you can do it if you feel comfortable with it. And I realize not everybody does. Anyway, so generally speaking though, you just use one of these machines, bagged such as it is, as unpopular as they are, and you just put it away back in your closet. I mean, make sure that there's nothing jammed or stuck in the brush roll. You know, like say, I don't know, a shirt, um, shoelaces, uh, tons and tons of hair, and you're, you're ready to go. I mean, there's not that much to do with these machines. It's one of the reasons why they last so long. It's pretty hard to break them. You can if you try hard enough, but normally you don't. Okay, so this ends the third uh, maintenance uh, video, and I hope you enjoyed the very short series. Until next time, happy vacuuming.